All right. Thank you, Yuval. And thank you, everyone, for trading um, half an hour uh, of nice morning sleep for hearing about trapdoor functions. So um, this is joint work with uh, Sanjom Gark and Roma Gay. Um, in our work, uh, we give constructions of trapdoor functions and uh, public key deterministic encryption. So let me start off by uh, reviewing these notions. Uh, trapdoor functions, as you all may know, are a variant of public key encryption with the added feature that the decryption algorithm also recovers the randomness that was used by the encryption algorithm. And uh, in terms of security, uh, we require one wayness, which is the most basic form of security, which says that um, a randomly chosen function from the family should be one way. Um, for deterministic encryption, uh, we require a, um, a weaker property than what you heard in the previous talk. Namely, we require block source security. That basically says that for any two input distributions, D0 and D1, each with min entropy at least k, the deterministic encryption of a sample from D0 should be computationally indistinguishable from uh, the deterministic encryption of a random sample from D1. And uh, ideally, we want um, k to be as small as possible, and in particular, much smaller than the bit length of the input. OK, so let's uh, look at the set of specific assumptions from which we can build these notions. Um, up until recently, we know how to build trapdoor functions only from a very narrow set of assumptions, which included factoring DDH and LWE. In joint work with Sanjom Garg from last year, we showed how to build trapdoor functions from the computational Diffie-Hellman assumption. For deterministic encryption, though, the only previous construction is based on lossy trapdoor functions, which in turn we know how to build only from decisional uh, assumptions. Uh, in particular, it is not clear how to build lossy trapdoor functions from the computational Diffie-Hellman assumption. And moreover, the CDH-based TDF from last year has this drawback that it leaks bits from the input, so it cannot be deterministic encryption secure. As one of the contributions of our paper, we show how to fix this problem to build um, deterministic encryption from CDH without having to go through lossy trapdoor functions, which is a primitive that we don't know how to build from uh, CDH. Uh, another point that I want to mention is that all these constructions uh, have this drawback that the ciphertext size or the image size is at least quadratic in the input size. Uh, when you compare this situation to public encryption, we know that for public encryption, which is a randomized primitive, we can have a schemes under which ciphertexts are almost of the same size as plain texts. So a natural question that arises is whether in the context of deterministic primitives like TDFs or deterministic encryption, is this quadratic blow up in the size inherent? Uh, we will show that and the answer is no. And we give a new technique for making the ciphertext size or the image size linear. Um, before that, though, let's uh, take a closer look at why we have this quadratic blow up using previous techniques. Um, if you have a group G with a generator small g, then we can encode any integer matrix M in the exponent of the group by computing G to the M, where G to the M means G to the first element, G to the second element, and so on. Now, the way that the evaluation algorithm of these previous TDF schemes works is based on this idea that if you have an encoding of a matrix M, which you can think of as the public key of the system, and if you have a bit vector x, which you can think of as the input to the TDF, then you can perform linear algebra in the exponent to compute an encoding of the matrix M times x. And if the matrix M is invertible, and if you know M inverse, you can invert this evaluation process to get back x. Under DDH, we can prove that this TDF scheme is secure. Now, if you look at the ciphertext, you can see that it's a vector of n group elements. So it is super linear in the size of x, which is a string of n bits. Okay. And the main source of overhead is this fact that we are encoding input bits via group elements in the output. 
we show how to avoid um, this overheads by introducing a technique for encoding bits via bits in the output. So with that, let me summarize our main contributions, which consist of feasibility and efficiency results. For feasibility, we give the first construction of deterministic encryption based on the computational Diffie-Hellman assumption. For our efficiency, we give a new technique for encoding input bits via so-called balanced output bits. I will tell you what that means in a moment. And as applications, we obtain the first CDH-based construction of trapdoor functions and deterministic encryption with linear image size. I want to uh, point out that all previous schemes that were based on even the stronger DDH assumption resulted in quadratically large uh, ciphertexts. And moreover, we show how to apply our techniques to obtain the first construction of lossy TDFs from DDH with linear image size. And finally, we show how to generalize our results to the CCA setting without destroying the linear image property. I just want to mention a fact here that there are some CCA-enhancing black box techniques in the literature, but most of them come with this drawback of expanding the ciphertexts. And we show how to avoid this. Uh, I will only have time to talk about our efficiency techniques for building linear image uh, TDFs, and I refer you to the paper for the other results. OK. So um, at a high level, we achieve linear image uh, TDFs uh, via a primitive that we call local TDFs. So let me first uh, informally tell you what this primitive is. Uh, remember that under standard TDFs, the inversion algorithm recovers the entire input uh, to the TDF algorithm. So now local TDFs relax this perfect correctness by allowing the inversion algorithm to be local in the sense that for every bit of the input, the inversion algorithm will either recover that bit correctly or it will give up and output the bot symbol. And each of these two will happen with probability one half. We show that if we can s somehow manage to build linear image local TDFs, then we can use error correcting codes in order to boost correctness to get standard TDFs without destroying the linear image uh, property. Finally, we show how to build linear image local TDFs from CDH or DDH, and this way we will get our ultimate results. OK, so now um, let me formalize a, a version of the notion of local TDFs that can be realized under CDH or DDH. Um, at a high level, you can think of the outputs of the evaluation algorithm of a local TDF as consisting of um, a short value h, which is a hashed version of the input x, plus n additional bits, where wi serves as a hint bit for the ith bit of the input. Okay. We require that the size of h um, uh, uh, only depend on the security parameter and be independent of n otherwise. This is how we enforce linear image, uh, l linear image size for our local TDFs. Um, for, a, uh, for inversion, we have a local property that says that if you have the trapdoor, then from the hash value h and from the ith hint bit, you will either be able to recover the, the ith input bit, or you will give up and output the bot symbol. And each of these two will happen with probability 1 half. Uh, I want to emphasize that during inversion, we, we don't have false positive answers. So if the inverter guy tells me that, look, the first bit of the input is a 1, I can uh, take it with faith. All right. So for security, we require that if you don't have the chapdoor. door, then it should be hard to guess the value of the ith bit of the input from the hash, uh, from the hash value h and the ith hint bit wi. OK. So uh, finally, we can think of the public key of the local TDF as consisting of a hashing key, which is used to perform hashing, plus n public keys where the ith public key is, is used to generate the ith hint bit. Uh, I want you guys to remember um, this format because we are going to stick to it during our uh, instantiation. All right. So now that we saw the notion of local TDFs, let's see how to boost linear image local TDFs to get uh, linear image uh, standard TDFs. As I mentioned earlier, we perform boosting by using error correcting codes. 
And the main idea behind this is that local TDFs allow for the recovery of a large fraction of the input bits. In more detail, on an input X, we first expand X using error correcting codes, and then we apply the local TDF evaluation algorithm on the resulting string Z. Okay. So now if you look, if you perform local inversion, you will be able to get most of the bits of Z, and um, that hopefully uh, will be enough in order to perform decoding to get back X. Okay. So by using error correcting codes, which are linearly expanding, and by the very fact that our local TDF by design is linearly expanding, we will get linear expansion for the final TDF. One point that I want to mention is that since the string Z is not uniformly random, but uh, only has high entropy, in order to have security, we should make sure that our local TDF is secure with respect to high entropy distributions. But this is something that typically can be handled using randomness extraction techniques. Okay, so, uh, so, now, let's, um, so now let me show you how to build local TDFs from CDH and DDH, starting with DDH. So remember, in order to build a local TDF, uh, we should answer two questions. How to hash an input X, and how to provide a hint bit for the ith input bit. Let me start with the first question. Uh, in order to hash X, our hashing key is a vector of n group elements. Okay? And our hashing operation is the simplest function that you can think of, is the inner product function, where we output the product of gi to the xi. Okay. So now you can see that this, ha this um, hash function is compressing. So it loses information f about the input. So we should provide some hint bits in order for the inverter guy to be able to invert the image. So now let me show you how to build a hint bit for the first bit of the input. And the idea for the other bits will be the same. In order to build hand bits, we will make use of a balance function BL, which has a property that the BL uh, of G for a randomly generated group element is a uniformly random bit. Such a function BL can be constructed information theoretically without making any computational assumptions. OK, so now the hint bit W1 is built based on a public key PK1, which is um, an element-wise exponentiation of the hashing key, except we multiply the first element by a random G prime. Okay. And we will also put the random exponent R as part of the trapdoor key. Now we define W1 to be we define W1 to be the BL of the product um, of the inner product between PK1 and X. OK, so now let's see why we have local inversion. So we would like to be able to recover x1 from the trapdoor R, the hash value H, and the hint bit W1. So in order to see why we can do this, notice that PK1 times x is nothing but either H to the R or H to the R times G prime, depending on whether the first bit of x hits G prime or not. OK, so if the BL of these two group elements uh, happens to be different, then I can determine whether x1 is equal to 0 or 1. And this condition happens with probability 1 half as desired. So we have local inversion. F uh, for security, we can argue that under DDH, we can replace this public key pk1 with a true exponentiation of the vector hk. And this way, we can guarantee that no information is leaked by w1 beyond h. All right, and this is how we obtain lossy TDFs based on DDH with linear image size. Um, unfortunately, this construction doesn't work under CDH because in the security proof, we rely on pseudo-randomness pseudo properties uh, of low entropy matrices, which, um, which cannot be proven under CDH. For CDH, we build local TDFs by building on techniques from uh, from the GH18 paper, um, uh, the CDH-based chapter function from last year. So I won't talk further about it, and I will ask you to please read the paper on it. 
OK, so let me summarize. Um, we gave the first construction of deterministic encryption from the computational Diffie-Hillman assumption. And we also gave um, a, a linear image technique for building um, a linear image lossy TDFs from a DDH and building linear image deterministic encryption uh, from uh, uh, the computational Diffie-Hillman assumption. Uh, in terms of open problems, um, it would be nice to see if there are other applications of our linear image uh, techniques. Also, the public key of our system, uh, as well as the public key of all the previous TDF schemes, have this drawback that it's quite large. It consists of a quadratic number of group elements. The question is, can we shrink the public key size without relying on pairings or other uh, stronger assumptions? Finally, a very uh, interesting question would be to build lossy chapter functions from the computational Diffie-Hellman assumption. And thank you for your attention. Any questions? So about this, uh, the, cho the choice of the um, like the probability of, of one half of uh, like failing of or decoding correctly. So is that so? Uh, is, so that's related to this BL function that gi that gives you with uniform probability zero or one, right? So, so uh, I'm wondering if I mean, would it make sense to consider like, um, and so, and that's related to the choice of the code as well. Like when you go combine it with the error correcting code. So, I'm wondering if there's any choice in parameters there. Like, I don't know if there's any scope for this BL function to have more structure, for example, to give you more information. So, uh, uh, you said uh, BLF or ELFs. Um, I, I, I yeah, I mean, uh, I, when you when you define the the lossiness with uh, with respect to, to uh -huh, the tabular uh -huh, function, uh -huh. so I just wonder about the choice of the probability of one half. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. That is a that is a very good question. So, um, uh, as I mentioned, if you want to boost local TDFs to a standard TDFs, you need to use error correcting codes. But the problem is our local TDF. Um, works over bin works over the binary field. Okay, so every input every uh, every input bit um, is an uh, is is either zero or one. So we don't have error correcting codes with good um, rates for bi for the binary field. So it turns out that uh, if you want to boost uh, correctness, we should uh, make use of error correcting codes, uh, which expand the input by a large constant. Okay, um, and so. You are right about that, but um, in some follow-up work, we showed that we can uh, we can work with inputs over a larger field, and we can and we can use better error correcting codes in order to have better constants for the resulting TDF. Yes, thank you for the question. Okay, uh, so let's uh, thank Mohammed again. <laughs>